wants to turn their lives around with the tip of their fingers. Would you like to do that? Yes. Do you know that if you're working hard on a problem, you are swimming upstream. It, if you're going to change your life, it must be that easy. Because the problems you have are misperceptions. There is no real problem. <coughs> Any problem you think you have is only there because you think you have it. If you can change your mind, if you can pause, step back, and choose to see it differently, whatever your problem was is instantly turned around. And it must be like that. If you're going to work at your problem, struggle with your problem, learn to cope with your problem, you perpetuate your problem. Your problem, whether it be financial, health, relationship difficulties, is all in the mind. I'm going to show you tonight in our two-hour seminar that only the mind can be sick. Your body can't get sick out of the blue. It can't just malfunction. If your body is diseased, you will have a disease. In other words, because there's stress in your body, the cells will become stressed. Your Achilles heel, which is your weakest organ, will malfunction. And then you go to the doctor and you say, please doctor, you know, it's my liver or my kidneys, and he will try and suppress the symptoms for you. Now a good doctor will tell you, look, this is only suppressing symptoms. We don't know the cause. And we haven't got a cure, but take these drugs to alleviate symptoms, which is what we want. We don't want to be in pain, but we are not solving the problem. The problem starts in the mind, and you've got to learn to get that message from the body. So any pain that you have is a messenger, is the body giving you a message saying, you've misperceived, you're holding on to anger, resentment, some sort of judgment, jealousy, any of these negative emotions. If you hang on to it, then your organs are going to malfunction. Your cells will malfunction. Your cells will pile up and become, you'll develop a tumor. And this tumor then starts to impinge upon surrounding organ, or organs. They call this cancer. And then it becomes malignant. When blood vessels go into that organ, that tumor, to try and make it into an organ to accommodate it. So the body in its wisdom is trying to accommodate all this damage you're doing. You're creating this stress, these lumps of cells, and then what do you do? You have chemotherapy, you poison all the cells in the body, knowing that the, the sick ones will take longer or won't be able to rejuvenate, and hopefully the, the good ones will. And that's very drastic chemotherapy or, or radiation therapy. So as soon as you disturb a tumor, those cancerous cells are going to spread all over the body. Now the doctors know this, but they're missing the point. You've got to look at the mind. You've got to look at what misperception you are entertaining that's causing this disease. So that's regards to your health. But look at financially now. How many people worry about the end of the month? You know, books, the end of the month. I mean, what? Do the birds worry about the end of the month? Do you see a sparrow waking up you know, on the 30th of July thinking, oh my God, it's the end of the month. Now we're going to pay the bills. I don't know. Have you ever seen a depressed sparrow? It doesn't know where its next meal is going to come from. It doesn't know it's the end of the month. It sings a song. It sits in the tree and sings. And because it sings, the trees blossom, the flowers blossom, and the bees come. And they, you know, pollinate. And therefore, the bird has seeds. There's this beautiful, harmonious rhythm to nature. Now, we are the kingpins of nature, right? We're supposed to be the top species. But we're the idiots. We're the ones that get sick. The animals must laugh at us. We're the ones that struggle. I mean, you know your cat and your dog lying on the carpet in the morning, you were getting up and you're rushing off to work. The dog will lift his head and say, where do you think you're going? This is your house, why did you come and lie in the sun with me? You're running off like that. 
go to us, they'd be crazy. You know, living north of Sweden on Ra. Because we have Adam's deception. We think we are a body, we think we're separate, and we start to worry about when, when our next meal is going to come from. I mean, has, have any of you ever been starving? You know, yogis and people that are working on themselves do a fast. And most people don't fast for spiritual reasons. And if you could not eat for 30 days, fantastic. So what are you worried about your next meal for? You know, it's, it's, turn it into a fast if you haven't got any food. But you will be fed anyway. You know, it's like if you, there's a beggar in the street and he sort of stops you and he says, Hey man, you know, I haven't eaten for three days. He wants some money. You should say to him, well, another four days and there'll be a week. Go for it. Well done. You know. <laughs> you see, we're getting it all wrong. We're worrying about things. And as soon as you start to worry, you upset the flow. You upset the balance. You destroy the abundance around you. But abundance is so easy. It's like planting a cabbage seed. I'm sure you've all planted seeds now, but if you've never planted a seed, I could say to you, see this little seed, plant this in the ground and you'll get a cabbage. And you'll probably say to me, oh, come on, I don't know how to grow cabbages. How do you do it? I don't know how to grow cabbages. But you don't have to know how to grow it. Just plant it in the seed, pack the soil and put some water there, and you'll get a cabbage. So you think, okay, well, I don't know if this is going to work, but you're going to plant your cabbage seed. The next day you go there, you look there, where's the cabbage? You come to me and you say, it didn't work. I told you it wouldn't work for me. And I say, wait a minute. It's a process. You've planted the seed, right? Now, trust. It's growing. It's a process. It's growing underground. So you wait a couple more days and you go, there, no cabbage. So you dig it up to see if it's growing underground. Now, what happens if you dig it up? You're going to destroy it. You expose it to the light. You'll destroy it. And you'll say, well, cabbages don't grow for me. That's what happens when people think that nothing goes their way. They've got these blockages, nothing will work for me. But if you plant that cabbage and walk away from it, one day you'll come out there and say, Wow, look at that, that's a miracle. There's a cabbage. And you even forgot about it. So we're going to show you how to plant a seed. Now, every thought you have is a seed planted in this fertile soil of the mind. Whatever image you hold before you, with the seed you plant, so shall you reap, without doubt. If you have a doubt, you might pick up your cabbages, plant a seed and trust the process. There's a beautiful saying that says, if you want an immediate effect, okay, now generally we all want an immediate effect, you know, we don't like to wait. But if you want an immediate effect, there's only one way for you to have an immediate effect, and that is to have infinite patience. Think about that. Infinite patience is the only thing that brings immediate effect. Infinite patience means you can wait. Why, why can you wait? Because you believe, you trust, you don't doubt, and your cabbage will grow. And you don't have to do any work. You don't have to know how it grows. So we're going to show you how to visualize, how to picture things in your mind, and that's how you plant seeds for your future, and you will get them. If you read my book, and it's an amazing book, I mean, I read my book all the time. I love my book because it reminds me of when I challenged these things. Because I didn't think they would work. You know, we've all got the books on our shelves that say, you know, power of positive thinking, visualize it, create a visualization, dare to dream your dream. Have you got those books on your shelf? Remember when you bought the book? Oh, well, I believe in this stuff. This is a good book. And you bought it, you came home, you said, Ah, oh, it's a good book. You put it on the shelf, and you never read it. I'll read it one day. I know it's true. I know what the book says. The book says anything you want is already yours. And I must read that one day, and you're going to struggle for the rest of your life, wondering why things aren't happening the way the book says. Well, even if you read the book, you say, wow, that was fantastic. And then you walk away, walk out into the world, and you get stuck in your old stuff again. So you can plant that seed, but we're going to show you how not to dig it up. And if you do, or if you're tempted to dig it up, with the click of your fingers, you'll say, no, wait a minute. 
I am not going to go there. I am not going to entertain the doubt. Because it's only your doubts that will stop your dream from manifesting. Now we all know how to dream. We've all set goals, right? You know that. And you know too that a lot of your goals have materialized. Have you noticed that? But the other goals don't materialize because of doubt. You dig up your cabbages. So we need to have a mechanism through which whenever we are tempted to doubt, we can snap out of it. And that's what we do in the mind frame technique. That's the third step. We're going to do the first step tonight. We can't do all five steps in a two-hour seminar. We need eight hours for that. And so we have our eight-hour seminar coming up on the seventh for those of you that want to master your lives, the rest of your lives, to heal that disease, to get rid of that blockage that's stopping you from being successful, and also to heal that relationship. So step number three, we're going to just allude to it, but in the eight-hour seminar, we actually program it in. You know how you program a computer? You go into the workings of the computer and you rewrite the code and then that computer will always perform according to the script you've written. Whatever you're doing in your life is according to the script you have written, which is determined by your belief system, which is determined by the thoughts that you entertain. Now most of us think that we've got no control over our thoughts. Take depression, for example. People get depressed, right? If you go to the doctor, sends you to a psychologist, and you say to the doctor, you're depressed, he says, yes, well, there's a chemical imbalance. Now he's right. Serotonin levels are out of balance. And so he gives you drugs to try and balance those chemicals. But where he's not right, he will tell you that the depression is caused by the chemical imbalance. Oh. It's the other way around. The, the thoughts that the depression causes the, the chemistical go chemicals to go out of balance. So what's happening is the wheels fall off your life, suddenly things aren't going the way you want to, and now you feel a loss, you feel hopeless, you feel, well, what should I do? You don't know whether to fight or flight or push or pull. So your body's getting confused signals, so there's different chemicals for each signal, and so the, the chemicals in the brain get scrambled, and yes, they are out of balance, but that didn't cause your depression. It's the other way around. It was that faulty thought. It was that fear. It was that anxiety. It was that misperception. See, all fears are misperception. There's nothing in this world, in this universe, or any other universe for that matter, that is the only thing that will upset you is a fear. And fear is the thought of being separate from your source. The thought of the possibility, I should add. The thought of the possibility of being separate from your source causes you to have fear. And that fear then reflects as all the other negative emotions that we have. Anger, uh, jealousy, whatever the negative emotion is, it comes from fear. But all fear is based on ignorance.